So this is the story of Tin. It had a long gestation period. It started about 15 years ago with a chance encounter with a photo on the wall of the Beeford Centre in North Devon. It's a picture of three actors, Mr Archie Quick, Mr Studley Brunscombe and Mr James Tucker. They're all dressed in their costumes for Beethoven's epic opera Fidelio, which they were apparently presenting in the village hall in High Bickington in the winter of 1911. A few years later I was given a copy of a Victorian novel called Tin by Edward Bazankith. This is based on the true story of a banking fraud that caused a scandal in St Just in the 1880s. I began writing a film adaptation of the book and the troupe of actors in the photo kept popping into my head and before long they'd woven themselves firmly into the story. A period drama set in 19th century Cornwall was never going to be easy to produce. As a first step, with the support of the Cornish Mining World Heritage Site Cultural Programme, we organised a rehearsed reading. The idea was to test the rather complicated story with an audience and to see which, if any, of the many characters they identified with. Oddly, it was the mine captain's maid, Nell, who's peripheral to both the mining and the opera stories, who appealed to most people. Who gives you the right to judge the rest of us for enjoying God's gifts? Even she must have dropped her knickers at least once! <laughs> so this was a very useful exercise and encouraged us to take the project one step further with a full-scale stage production of Tin. The way to bring uh, a World Heritage Site to life is to tell the stories of the people that created that place. Otherwise, it's just a pile of stones. So projects like Tin, by explaining from the perspective of the communities that were working in and around the mining industry in Cornwall in the 19th century, what their way of life was like, what they were feeling, what they were thinking, their loves and hates, their, their, their trials and tribulations, it enables people today to personify and, and or rather identify with them much more closely um, and brings that story much nearer and makes it a more emotional experience and as we know when you engage someone's emotions they'll remember that experience for the rest of their life and that's what we're trying to create through working with Miracle on the TIM project. Continued support and financing from Cornish Mining World Heritage Site enabled Miracle to develop and grow TIM into a major community project. To ensure that we did justice to the operatic elements of the story, we collaborated with English Touring Opera. ETO were keen to oversee the community aspect of the project and began to recruit enthusiastic singers to join five choirs, one in each area where the play was to be performed. Every project that I do is different, so this is not normal at all because this is very odd actually and unique collaboration between an opera company and a theatre company and those partnerships are very rare actually in my experience um, and the beauty of it really is that Miracle Theatre come at their work from really a very very different place to an opera company. I mean an opera company tends to uh, work with existing material, whereas Miracle creates their own material. What's been great is, is the natural partnership between the kind of area of work that I do for an opera company and, and Miracle, which is um, really to kind of all challenge ourselves and, and go in slightly odd and quirky directions. My work is very much to do with working with young people, so uh, it's kind of absolutely normal for me to work with young people of every ability. I mean, a, a, a big part of this project for me is working with young people who are not uh, that great at singing. It's not something that they do every day. And it's, it's, it's being a, a big part of the project to encourage those young people to sing, to take part, to go out of their comfort zone, to do something that's really unusual and challenging for them. Um, I mean, my, my, my whole life is spent creating work with people who have done nothing like that before. So this is very much in, within that kind of world of, of, of work. Of, you know, just doing something kind of a bit mad, a bit crazy and, and unusual. I mean, you know, kids down the road in uh, Redruth or Poole singing opera, it's, it's really amazing and crazy thing to do, actually, when you think about it. And 
by and large, they've loved it. Over 150 people of all ages signed up and began to rehearse four pieces. A chorus from Fidelio, a traditional Cornish hymn, and two songs specially composed by Russell Pascoe. Um, I was approached by Tim Yeland to write music for the production sometime last year. Um, and it sounded like a lovely project because it's involved in the community with professional singers as well. Um, and he said to me that he wanted it to have a Cornish flavour. So being a Cornishman, that was an ideal commission for me. Um, I was asked to rearrange the Fidelio chorus to make it slightly simpler because in its original version for four-part choir it's quite difficult um, and because we knew we were going to have a lot of children in it I then reduced it to three parts and made some of the lines a bit more singable <laughs> which was great fun improving on Beethoven um, and then I wrote a carol for a scene Bill wrote some words uh, and I have to say they were an absolute gift the words are beautiful and they've, they've got the Cornish spirit of composers like Thomas Merritt, um, who, who's performed each Christmas time with his carols. And so I wrote it consciously in his style, um, and then tried it out with the children at school, and they seemed to enjoy singing, so that was all right. Um, and I also wrote a drinking song which I had to do a lot of research for in the local pubs and um, Bill wrote the words for that as well and, and that was great fun to set, so very happy. Ben Luxon was persuaded to come out of retirement in the USA and move back to Cornwall for three months to join the ensemble of singers from ETO and actors from Miracle Theatre who made up the 11-strong core company. Well, tin came up for me when I worked with Bill Scott, uh, some years ago, now making a little film about the lighthouse keeper. And I remember at that time, Bill was kind of slightly obsessed with this idea of this novel tin. And so now it's, he's actually been able to do it and, uh, and got in touch with me to say, would I be interested in being involved? Which I said, yes, I would. And then Bill said, well, maybe you could do a narration or something like that. And I said, well, yes, I, I could do that, but I could also play a part. And so he came back to me and said, oh, God, I've got the perfect part for you. I, I, I have to say that I just, sooner or later, the urge to stand up in front of people and either say something or do something is, I guess, is too strong. I mean, and I, I can, I can keep out of it for maybe a couple of years, and then, you know, I, I want to be up there again. Uh, we're here on behalf of Richard Lander School's Changing Voices Choir. It's, it's a really good play because it, it's got Cornish heritage. It features everything that Cornwall is. It's got mining. It's got some kind of, it's kind of timeless plot of money and kind of financial issues, which is going on quite a lot at the moment. Uh, I've learned that every show is different. Uh, I've always uh, been to Miracle performances and always wondered what it's like to actually be in one. Uh, my name is Keith Sparrow. I sing with Dutchy Opera and with the Men of Good Fortune, a male singing group which is part of Dutchy Opera, most of which are here. Um, my role is one of the community choir, so we are forming the, the colour of the, the background. For me, obviously working with the, the children has been quite amazing, um, particularly I mean, dealing with the boys who have really embraced the whole experience and had a lot of fun with it, which is fantastic. But also with the adult choirs, um, I've not met many of the male voice choir people before and it's built a real sense of camaraderie, I suppose, between us, which has been fantastic. Uh, and we feel like old friends now. And we've only done six shows together and a few rehearsals, but we feel like we're all mates, which is, is brilliant, I think. Um, I'm Wendy Polly. I'm Music Development Officer at the Roseland Community College in Tregony. OK, well, it's an amazing chance for them to work with professionals because it really lifts them out of their everyday experience at school. They see obviously the same teachers week after week, and it's just really nice to have fresh faces, people that are really working in, in the in industry that they might be interested in going into. Um, and yeah, just raising their game really, and um, raising their level of performance. You know, obviously they do performances in school, but to be on stage at Hall for Cornwall and other local venues, 
It's been quite amazing. Where the hell have you been? Audiences flocked to see the show at Heartlands in Poole, in a tent on the cliff top at Batalic, at Sturts near Liscard, at the Wharf in Tavistock, and at the Hall for Cornwall in Truro. Excellent, really very responsive tonight. The best response that I've seen in the performances that I've done. I've enjoyed it thoroughly, I've really enjoyed myself. Oh, interesting, it was good. It was good to get involved with such a, a multi-talented show. Yes, there's so very many... professional uh, people to work with and it was uh, an enjoy to work with. Absolutely, yes. Oh, God. oh, it was fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. It really, really... Well, it was lovely is just working with professionals and uh, it, it's just... It just stretches your voice, it gives you that experience and tonight, um, in front of 900 people plus, was uh, not very often do you get the opportunity to do that. It was great. Yeah, really absolutely very, very good. great. Brilliant. Yes. Yes. Lovely yeah. yeah. watching the whole thing grow yeah. yeah. and everything. Yeah. And even now every performance yes. is yeah. revealing more and more. Mark it. Tin was originally conceived as a screenplay. And since we'd now assembled a group of skilled actors and singers, we'd rehearsed the scenes, developed the characters, designed and made the beautiful costumes and props, and written a complete musical score, it seemed obvious that this was the moment to attempt to shoot the film. A series of tests showed that we could successfully create the world of a 19th century tin mining community in Cornwall using a series of 112th scale models into which the actors could be keyed during post-production. Designers Al and Jude Munden built a green screen at Crowdgy in Red Ruth. Actors Jenny Agata and Dudley Sutton agreed to join the existing cast and over a 15-day period, a 90-minute feature film was shot using the latest digital technology. Tin's been a project of epic proportions for Miracle Theatre. It's involved a stimulating and fruitful collaboration with English Touring Opera, dozens of enjoyable workshops with schools and community groups across the region, several new partnerships with organisations safeguarding and promoting Cornwall's heritage, and a shoot that brought together many of the best local filmmakers. We're looking at a release date late in 2013. is blessing. We have not long to dig the grave. We have not long, we have not long to dig